The Xbox 360 was extremely successful from the beginning of the generation to the end, selling well over 80 million units and revolutionizing online gaming forever. And in 2013, the 360's reign came to an end with the launch of the Xbox One. But that wasn't the only new console Microsoft launched in 2013. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the forgotten Xbox 360E, the final 360 ever, and definitely the strangest. You'd be forgiven for mixing this 360 up with an Xbox One, because it looks nearly the same. I'm not really sure why Xbox took this approach. I think there's a good chance they did it in an effort to help unify their lineup. The Xbox One was so called because it was supposed to be your all-in-one entertainment unit. From games, to TV, to streaming, to you name it. It's not quite the same thing, but Xbox making a 360 that looks similar kind of fits the theme they were going for. And Microsoft wasn't unique in making a radically different look for their older system as Sony did the same thing around the time of the PS4 launch with the PS3 Super Slim. But that one actually kind of made sense. It was a cheaper, more plasticky version of the PS3 and served as a budget option for those who wanted a PlayStation but couldn't afford the PS4. The Xbox 360E was revealed at E3 2013 alongside the Xbox One, and the day of the announcement, it was made available for purchase. It was told that the console would be smaller, sleeker, quieter than the Xbox 360S. It came in at a price price of $199 for the 4GB model and $299 for the 250GB model, or $299 for the 4GB model and the Xbox Kinect. Don't forget this is back in the days when the Kinect was extremely relevant and a huge part of Microsoft's plan moving forward. While Microsoft talked a big game with the 360e, it actually made basically no improvements over the S. It's slightly smaller, but beyond that, really all you get is a newer design and lose a good few connection ports, including a single USB because who knows. One positive change, at least in my opinion, was the replacement of the touch buttons. So on this console you physically click the power and eject buttons, whereas on the S you just uh, activate it by touching it. Now I'll admit, back in the day when my friend had an S model 360, I thought the whole touch thing was kind of cool, but in hindsight I do prefer the physical buttons and I think there's a reason both Sony and Microsoft don't use the touch ones anymore. This was the last Xbox to ever have a pop open disk drive, interestingly enough, with the Xbox One moving to the more typical slot loading disc tray that it kind of just magically sucks in your game. I do remember this Xbox being announced. I would have been about uh, 13 years old or so, uh, June 2013, yeah, 13 years old. And I thought it was pretty cool, like pretty cool looking. I, I liked the look. I was just not sure why it was the thing. And uh, now in hindsight, I don't think it looks bad, but it definitely doesn't have the same feeling of an Xbox 360. It looks like a different console. Well, I mean, it looks like an Xbox One Lite. That's what it really looks like. Or perhaps an Xbox One Mini, with glossy plastic on the left half and a grill venting design on the right, surrounded by a more matte black finish. The problem with glossy plastic is that it scratches and gets dirty much too easily. I bought this console used from eBay recently, and while it runs perfectly fine, it's certainly not in the best condition possible. Also, funnily enough, this sticker was left on here. It has a warning saying not to move the console while there's a disc in it. And while I was looking for a 360E, almost every single one I found still had this sticker on it. Despite the fact that it's kind of an eyesore, people just don't remove it. I don't know why Microsoft even felt the need to have it on there in the first place, but the original Xbox One of course had it as well. And so what Microsoft did eventually do was put a little tab below it on the Xbox One S and X to encourage people to peel it off, which is honestly kind of hilarious in my opinion. But anyways, uh, this is the original Xbox One beside the Xbox 360e, and it's immediately clear just how similar they look. Well, technically this is isn't the original, original Xbox One. It's a slightly revised version that dropped the glossy plastic in favor of a matte finish, and it's definitely an improvement. It's still a ridiculously huge console, although nothing compared to the PS5, but it makes the Xbox 360e look tiny. And I mean, to be fair, the 360e is pretty darn compact. Probably the best thing about the console. It's funny looking at reviews when this 360 came out. Basically, all of them had nothing to say beyond that it brought nothing to the table. Lots of conclusions telling you to wait for the Xbox One or to pick up an old 
older 360 bundle. And tons of complaints about the lack of Blu-ray drive too, which is fair enough. It's true, the Xbox 360E wasn't really special. And at the same price that the Xbox 360S was, you had to kind of ask, why? Who would buy this? It was definitely a tough sell, especially with the Xbox One right around the corner. $200 or $300 with a Kinect for a four gigabyte Xbox 360 was absolutely ridiculous. This was the internal storage. There was no included hard drive, and given this came out in 2013, we're not talking pre-2010 here, this is 2013, it's hard to excuse so little space. Microsoft, you really couldn't put more than four gigs in this thing, seriously? Now you might be thinking, eh, you know, it's not that bad, just don't download any games. But in 2013, even if you weren't downloading any games, four gigs was just not very much space. Halo 4, for example, was extremely popular and required users to have 3.5 gigs of free space to install the multiplayer at minimum. And why was was that the next step up was 250 gigabytes. Why can't we have an 120 gig option in here somewhere? Actually, my 360E here does have 120 gigs. As far as I can tell, this originally was a four gig 360, but the previous user bought a aftermarket hard drive for it. I'm assuming it's aftermarket because there's no branding and it says made in China on the back in pretty bold writing. And I'll give it to Microsoft. It was really easy to install it. All you have to do is just push it in here on the side. The four gigabytes was ridiculous, but looking at this console from a modern lens is never going to give a fair impression. But you know what? That's okay, because we do have the power of hindsight, and a full generation of gaming to help us really judge how exactly this console stands isn't a bad thing. And even now, I don't think anyone would argue with me that this is probably the strangest, most pointless console Microsoft has ever developed, at least under the Xbox branding. I have to clarify that, because if I don't, someone will probably argue that the Sega Dreamcast could fit. Although I would strongly disagree with that, the Dreamcast didn't sell the best but it was still a pretty awesome console. And yeah, did you know the Dreamcast used an optimized version of Windows CE and integrated DirectX? Microsoft's announcement of the partnership is actually still live on their website. Mind you, the Dreamcast didn't really use the Windows in a conventional sense, but it was used for certain things when booting up games and whatnot. And it was a cool idea because in theory, game devs could make games for the console as well as PC using the Windows-based tools they were used to. Mind you, hardly any developers actually took advantage of this, but it was still a neat idea and directly led to Microsoft making their own console and releasing the Xbox in 2001. Actually, in the early 2000s, interestingly enough, Microsoft seriously considered buying Sega, but of course, that never happened. But anyways, I think it's safe to say that the Xbox 360E is just strange. It's an Xbox 360 that looks like an Xbox One and never needed to exist in the first place. It was sold from 2013 to 2016. That's right, it actually wasn't discontinued until 2016, the same year the Xbox One S came out. What you'll notice is that the launch of the new Xboxes with the Series S and the X, there was zero revision to the Xbox One. In fact, as far as I can tell, the vast majority of retailers don't even carry the Xbox One anymore. Remember, the 360 was sold until 2016, so this shows a pretty clear shift in how Microsoft is going about things as time goes on. And I think there's one major reason for it. The new consoles are completely backwards compatible with all Xbox One titles, unlike the Xbox One in 2013 when it couldn't yet play any 360 games. They did start adding the limited backwards compatibility in 2015, but until then, if you wanted to play your favorite 360 titles, you would actually need an Xbox 360. That's probably the biggest reason Microsoft kept it around for so long. That, and I'd imagine it must have been selling at least decently well. But answering that doesn't explain why they had to update from the Xbox 360S. I mean, that machine was fine. It mostly solved the red ringing issues. All it really did was just look like the Xbox One. Part of me really wonders how many grandparents went into Walmart wanting to buy their grandkid the new Xbox, only to end up getting the Xbox 360e because from their perspective it looked the same and it was cheaper so win-win. Let's be real that must have happened somewhere and I would be willing to bet some serious money that it wasn't a super uncommon occurrence. Ultimately though the Xbox 360e is an Xbox 360 just in a smaller shell of the Xbox One and as strange as that is I can't help but find the console pretty darn cool. It's not very useful anymore in fact the 360 in general has quickly become obsolete in recent years as the newer Xboxes have been able to play the vast majority of big 360 titles, with some exceptions, but it makes it hard to justify using a 360 anymore, because if you're already using a newer Xbox, you might as well just play the game on there. All in all, the Xbox 360e is one of the strangest consoles Microsoft has ever made. It's weird, and while I don't quite understand why Microsoft made it in the first place, hey, it gives me something to talk about in this video, and I'm not complaining about that. But with that, I think I'm about done here. Hopefully you found this video interesting, and if you did, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter 
and Instagram at 91 underscore tech. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. This was a fun video to make, a bit of a journey down memory lane, even though I never had one of those when I was younger. It was still interesting and uh, picking one up was quite a bit of fun. But yeah, uh, thanks again for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech and I will see you all next time.